Hi, good morning. Dana Childs from ProView Sports here at Hoffman Town Church for this special ProView report on the protest to play. It's Friday morning coming up here at 10 o'clock. Uh, supporters of student athletes who want to play will gather here at Hoffman Town Church to hear their voices be heard in a peaceful protest. Now, this is all in response to Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham's report yesterday on the status of the coronavirus in New Mexico. All of the leading, all of the trends, all the measurable characteristics are all on the rise in a negative and potentially dangerous way. So Michelle Lujan Grisham has urged New Mexicans to mask up, stay at home, limit your trips if you have to go out, practice social distancing, and certainly limit the large crowds, which is what we're uh, supporters uh, apparently are hoping to see here today. Now this is in response to the governor's um, a statement yesterday that all of the fall sports will be pushed back to the spring. This is a further delay from sports that did not happen uh, in the spring and athletes, parents, teachers, administrators, coaches and fans uh, want to see some games. And so that's why this protest is here today and uh, throughout this morning's program we hope to talk to some parents, some student athletes, some coaches and some fans to hear their take because again Health officials, the governor, people that are in place to keep us safe have noticed the trends and have made this recommendation that we try to lower the spread and control the spread of the coronavirus in New Mexico. But just a couple of months, a couple of weeks ago, we were all in very, very good shape in the past couple of weeks. There's been an outbreak that's on the rise and health officials want to try and suppress that for our public health and safety. And the governor also mentioned that if this spread continues, it could lead to a further economic shutdown, which would bring even further hardship to uh, other New Mexicans. So today, though, we're here to talk about sports and uh, high school sports in particular. Students want to play, athletes want to go, and uh, it's a multifaceted concept that involves, you know, what do students need, what do young athletes need, what about the parents, the socialization, and of course the competition. You know, for many of us at ProView Sports, we look back on our senior year in high school, and it was one of the best years of our lives. We played sophomore JV, we trained, we learned, we waited our turn. And when our senior year came around, it was on, and uh, some great memories. And uh, we all feel bad that these seniors are being denied that opportunity to, to be their best at their prime in high school. Get some looks for colleges. This is a great opportunity for them to get some exposure. So there's a lot of things going on here. And the parents, the coaches, the student athletes and fans are going to be here today. Administrators as well, I'm sure. To voice their concern and their right to want to play. So we hope to talk to some of these people. Let's mask up, dive in, and see what's going on. At Cleveland, they're the returning state champs. I'll bet you're anxious to play some ball. No, yeah, I'm definitely anxious to play at Cleveland this year and not only play, but also go to school there because I am a transfer. And then, um, so coming from a different La Cueva last year, now at Cleveland, you know, I'm just looking for high expectations on the field and during in the classroom. Now, as a senior, you've put in the work as a freshman, sophomore, maybe going back even to eighth grade. But senior year, that's the payoff year. And uh, how do you feel about not playing? I mean, not being able to play is definitely is hit hard, not just for me, but everyone around me in the sports community. You know, you work for your senior year every year. Freshman year, you're on C team. You want to get pulled up to JV or varsity in the year. And sophomore year, you want to get your starting position on JV so you can get pulled up and float varsity. And then junior year, that's when you really can shine. You know, you got your first starting spot on varsity. And your senior year, you know, that's when you make everything last. You put it all on the field, and that's almost the last time for people if they want to go play college. You know, senior year is really where they can make their mark. So you want to play in the face of all the statistics and the trends that are on the rise? Yes, I do. You don't feel there's a danger? I do not feel there's a danger. I feel that you have the same danger as going to the store as you do going to school. You interact with more random people at the store. You don't know where they're coming from, where their background is. First going to school, you know what they're doing every day. You know where they're going after school, they're going home. And you're around these people and you're gonna develop. And school's just essential to human life. It allows you to grow your talents, meet with professionals, and it's just a place for kids to escape and do something new. And same with sports. Physical activity is proven to increase blood flow to the brain, and that allows new connections between nerves, which enhances connectivity, and it's just overall and very important to human life. So you have your own science. Yes, I do. And it makes good sense. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, are any of your friends or student athletes suffering because of all this? There's a, there's a lot of depression and loneliness and isolation. No. You seen any of that or how are you no, yeah, it's, that? It's very hard because we have kids who are falling behind in school and have gone from straight A students to now are failing some classes and it's just super hard because when you have online school you're not face to face with a teacher and if you have a question you have to email and wait for hundreds of other emails teachers are getting slammed with because kids just don't know quite what to do and so it's really important for that face on face action and so I mean it's just hard to see kids you know mental illness right now is like really bad because New Mexico has always been high up there with um, suicide rates and just now it's even spiking and even just abuse at home. School is a place for kids to get out and get away from that. And so, I mean, it's just, it's super tough seeing things like that and seeing these rates rise. And so I think school is just so important for everyone, not just sports, but being in there and learning. Well, we're glad you're handling it so well. Thanks for being part of our program here Thank today you. on ProView Sports. Before you go, do you have a message for the governor? I just want to say, let us choose. Let our parents be the ones that make the decision for us. I don't think it's fair for you just to block everything down and not, or less, not let your citizens have a voice. Next is Lindsay from La Cueva. Lindsay, thanks for being here this morning. Thank you. Well, you know, the statistics are the statistics. It's science. All the trends are on the rise. And for our public safety, uh, health, and economy, the governor has recommended that we postpone these fall sports with strict guidelines in place. Push those back to the spring, and we're here at ProView Sports to find out how you and your teammates at La Cueva are reacting to that. Wonderful. Well, um, uh, being a high school athlete is something that not a lot of people get to experience, and it should be something that's so fun and enjoyable for everybody and a chance for people to get away from what's at home or what's around them. And um, the fact that it's being taken away from us is not okay. Um, uh, as citizens of America, we need to have a choice, and we are being robbed of that choice, and it's it's not okay. So you feel it's safe to go ahead and participate, gather in large groups, and compete, even in the face of what uh, our government officials are saying? I, I do. I believe in doing it safely, um, and I think there's ways that we can do it safely, just as people do at the stores. You wear your mask and you stay six feet apart, and I don't think there's any way that sports can't happen with the same rules. Let me slide this over just a little. There you are. Um, so as a senior, what were you and your teammates at La Cueva looking forward to this year? We were looking forward to getting back um, the state championship that we lost last year. Um, we were ready to fight and we were ready to uh, make a difference. And we were robbed of that opportunity. So you personally, how have you been holding up during this? And can you tell us just a little bit about your training schedule and how you have you been in staying in shape and how? Um, it has been very difficult to uh, continue to work with all the maneuver or with all the guidelines that we have to maneuver through. Um, and so anything that um, students can work to or student athletes can do um, is on their own. And it's hard to when you're in a team environment, um, you have that option to play for your team and with your team. But when you're robbed of that option, um, it's difficult to be able to get better and continue to work hard when there's not a lot of um, opportunities to do so. Now, were there guidelines in place for your sport and the competitions? For example, cross country, you stay on your bus, the team area, you know, you report to the starting line mm -hmm. just a few minutes before. When your event's over, you get out. Can you tell us some of the guidelines that were in place to keep student athletes safe in softball? Yes, yeah, so um, we had to get out of our cars with our mask on, walk to practice with our mask on, and stay six feet apart. And um, our mask had to stay on us the entire time. And uh, just, we weren't able to do any contact, so anything that we did um, had to be in the guidelines of what the governor said. And speaking of the governor, finally, Lindsay, do you have a message in case she happens to see this? Do you have a message for her? I would like to just say that um, students need to be given the opportunity and the choice to choose for themselves. And it's not okay that someone is making that decision for us when it's not the best thing for the students. My wife and I, Kim McDonough DeFilippis, and myself are parents of, of a, a twin uh, sophomores. I'm sorry, juniors, and um, 
They both are involved in activities. And our son just made the golf team two days ago. We were thrilled for him because finally he gets to do some extracurricular activities. And then the day after, we find out that um, it's canceled. So that's why how we're did, here. How did your student athlete uh, relatives react to that? Uh, well, my son's pretty depressed. He was pretty depressed about not getting back to school t this, w this year. And he was pretty excited about getting back into golf. And then when this was canceled, he was uh, totally distraught by it. And uh, his depression has gotten worse. And do you and he, I'm asking you to speak for him. Sure. Which take a little attitude. But you and he both feel that the safety protocols that are in place would be enough to keep him and his other student athletes safe? Definitely. Listen, I understand that there's some contact sports that uh, players get right up against each other. They breathe on each other. But golf is an exterior, you know, an external sport. It's a, a you know, a outdoor sport where, you know, players play at you know individual at times. Uh, they could keep their distance. They could wear masks, and so there's some sports that are m more than safe uh, to, to continue. And uh, are you okay with the students being able to compete, but no fans? Um, they, you know, they won't allow parents and fans like they did for the basketball tournament. How do you feel about that setup? The student athletes get to compete, but you don't get to watch listen, in person. Primary, primarily, it's about the students. It's not about the parents. It's about the students. The students should be allowed to play. Now, should I think that parents should be allowed to go see their children play? Definitely. But if I had to compromise, and I'm a compromising kind of kind of guy, I, I'd be okay with the children playing, even if I couldn't go watch them. But yes, I think parents should be able to go watch your kids uh, perform. Brandon, uh, head football coach at La Cueva, certainly wanted to get back at action and defend that state title. Uh, you're here today at the uh, protest to play. Why? Well, I just think it's important for these kids to uh, have a voice. Um, and this whole thing and this whole time, this has been the, we've never asked these kids what they want to do. Uh, we give them a lot of responsibility and a lot of decisions that they make throughout the day, their own personal lives and daily lives. Um, and uh, they just don't get a voice in this situation. And, um, you know, they're not, uh, they're, they're hanging out like they always do. Um, since March, I've seen kids in large groups hanging out, uh, doing their normal thing. Um, and the only thing that this has done is removed uh, good adult supervision and good adult leadership uh, from their lives over the last six months. As a coach, uh, as a father, teacher, administrator, how are you holding up with all of this? For me, it's personally, it's hard. I feel like I'm losing my mind a little bit. Um, it's uh, it's just uh, it's a difficult situation, and it's 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 just hard. It's hard on me. It's hard on a lot of our coaches. It's hard on a lot of our kids. Uh, can you tell us about some of the kids? Uh, have any of them come to you with some personal well, struggles? You know how how, what are they and how are. have you been able to help them? Yeah, you know, they can't see past the end of their nose to begin with. Um, and so it's very difficult for them to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and, you know, on the, for seniors especially, it's very difficult because these kids have been working their entire lives for their, their shot as a senior. It's, their senior year is very important. Their senior year is very special. And uh, when, it, when it's being ripped away like this, it's having a huge impact on them. And then they are social creatures. Uh, they need to see each other. They need to be around each other. They need to be uh, in school, and they need to see, they need to have those daily contacts with each other and their st teachers and their administrators. And, and having that ripped away from them is definitely having a negative impact on their mental health, um, and it just it correlates into everything else they do. There's a lot of poor decisions going on right now. So if they do gather, do you feel that the safety protocols that are recommended and are in place are enough to keep you and the student athletes and the fans Yeah, safe? I think they're fine. Um, you know, the protocols that are in place. Here's the bottom line. Um, everybody knows what the situation is. Everybody is aware of how dangerous this could be for a very small population of people. Everybody is aware of the risks involved. And it's my decision as a family member, it's my decision as a father, whether or not my kids go outside and, and participate. And it's and I trust the families that I have in my program to make that decision. And we've had parents who said, no, it's just a little risky for us. We have a grandparent who lives with us, and so we're going to stay away for a little while. And we support that 100%. But it's their decision, it's, and I support their decision. It's my decision as a father whether or not my kids go out. It's my decision on uh, whether or not my family leaves the house. And so we're all aware of the risks. Um, we don't need an elected official who's only going to be in office for one term to make that decision for us. So uh, it's time to move on and, and to let us play and to let us get back to what we, what we know we can do. Outstanding. Thank you so much. Hey, and you're a respectable dude. And finally, the last thing, if you could go back. 
uh, the last thing. One more step back, please. Yeah, there you are. You're looking real good this morning, too. Yeah. Uh, and do you have, in case she sees this, do you have a message for the governor? They just that it's a family's decision. We're very aware of the risks. We're very aware of what's going on. Um, and it's our decision as families on whether or not we can leave the house and whether or not we can compete. And all you're doing really is you're just separating the gap from the haves and the have-nots because there are parents who can send their kids to Phoenix and Texas for tournaments, which they're doing every weekend, and that's going to continue to grow. And the kids who desperately need the high school athletics who don't have that resource, they're the ones falling further and further behind. So congratulations. You have really made the gap bigger. I hope that's something that you stand proud of. So you're a leader within your student body. Yes, sir. And an athlete. So why do you think it's okay to play the governor, your leader? Maybe you want to go into public service. Uh, it's her job to keep us safe. She's issued recommended guidelines, mm -hmm. and yet you feel it's okay to play. Why do you feel that way? Yes, I do. Um, firstly, um, I think every single day that I've been in volleyball practice, I go in and they take my temperature. We continually sanitize throughout our practice. They they uh, sanitize everything that we touch. And so I think that we can play sports safely. I really do. So volleyball being a non-contact sport, Correct. you mentioned a couple of the safety protocols. Can you tell us a few more, a lot more of them? Like, you know, for cross country, stay on the bus, don't show up at the starting line until right before. What, what things were impl implemented for volleyball to keep you safe? So of course we have to mask up the whole time. Um, our temperature, of, of course, has to be under, uh, I think it was like a 100, like so we don't have a fever. We are sanitizing our hands and our balls during practice, after practice, before practice, always sanitizing. And uh, um, we have to bring our own water bottles. It's, it's, a, it's a lot more safe than any of us would be doing going to stores. Thousands of people go to stores, thousands of people go to weight rooms. And I think that like even that's more dangerous than us athletes masking up five other girls on the court. Um, and uh, have any of your friends been uh, affected or contracted the disease? Oh, we are we are all heartbroken, but uh, none of us have contracted the disease. And, none of uh, us. So you feel it's safe to play and you want to play? I do want to play and I feel that we can do it safely. Finally, in case she happens to see this, do you have a message for the governor? I do. Uh, one thing that's very important to me is mental health. Um, in my hometown of Socorro, in the past two months, we've lost two kids to suicide. I have a family friend in the Four Corners who has lost nine kids to suicide, and uh, we have yet to lose one kid to COVID. And I just think that like enough is enough. And the only message that you're sending by canceling sports is or postponing sports is that you don't care about our mental health and you don't care about our future. Um, so I just want to have all the student athletes just stand up. Um, Use your voice, let your voice be heard. I'm hoping to play volleyball and softball this year and I hope to not be able to have to choose between softball and volleyball. The volleyball protocols are in place. You think they're enough to keep you safe? Um, I mean, if we all like obey and abide by the rules, I think we should be allowed to play because this is our last year for many students and we have to just learn. This is an outlet for many kids. Like. A lot of kids stay home all day and do school and struggle and sports is their outlet to get out and do what they love and it's it's a team, it's a family. I know my team's a family and I love, I look forward to that every single day to be able to play with them and see them. So I think it's really important for most students as well because like I said, it, it brings joy and happiness into people's lives when they may be stuck in a dark place and sports is really an outlet for sure, for sure. But there's a risk involved. There's definitely a risk and I think it's very important to have those risks in mind and keep that in our thoughts, of course, but I mean, we have to follow the rules and if we're all willing to do that, I think we should get a chance to play and show that we, we deserve this chance, we deserve, we deserve this. So why did you come all the way from Grants to be here today? All of us came, came together. It's, I just love how all of us come together and fight so strong for what we believe in. Like, we believe in this team. We believe in this, like, we're a family, we all believe that we should be doing something we love. So. Finally, before I let you join the protest, okay. do uh, you have a message for the governor? Um, just give us a chance, like, we all just want a chance to be able to play. Honestly, like, 
it's our year. It's our year for sure. And I'm going to get emotional. It's okay. Just, just be honest. Let us play. Give us the opportunity to express ourselves and do what we want to. This is what we love. This is we like fight so strong for this. We love this. So just give us a chance. Protesters uh, after assembling here at Hoffman Town Church are now heading over to the Albuquerque Academy for their peaceful protest. I want to thank everyone who participated in this Provia News special, the protest to play. It's been a peaceful demonstration so far, and they are going to make their way around the Albuquerque Academy. Uh, unable to get a hold of any official sponsors of this event today, but a couple from uh, a couple of officials from Hoffman Town Church wanted to let you know that they are not the sponsor of this. Uh, they just became aware last night that they will be using their grounds, and they were uh, okay with allowing that to happen. Not that they uh, are either side of the protest, they just want to make sure they stay clear of being in the middle of it, uh, that uh, they're just letting these peaceful protesters use their grounds to express their voice. I want to thank you for watching this ProView Sports News special, the protest to play here at Hoffman Town Church. Thank you for watching. I'm Dana Childs for ProView Sports. for El Dorado at the Manzano 8. Smith will roll to his left. Got a receiver open, throws. Oh, Let's see if he drugs the toe. Touch. Steel. He's off to the races. Steel is off to the house. Touchdown, Zivola. He's got some room to the outside. Williams turns the corner. Shot out of a cannon, and he's going to go. Touchdown. Pass up with yeah, the run. Court on the quarterback keeper in the, in the wow, open day line. 50 45. No one will catch Jordan Bird. Oh, my God. 70 yard touchdown run for the senior, the fastest man in New Mexico. Smith, he'll roll right, draw play. Gallegos has room, nice move by Resma. Troy, 10, 5, cuts it back at the 5, touchdown. Wow. Touchdown, Manzano. To his left, three receivers to the right. Cedillo ends on, touchdown, yes! Wilkinson makes another cut. He's at the 10. Wilkinson all the way, dancing into the end zone. Montanaris might have a returnable play here. He's going to go up the middle. Makes a spin. Oh, <laughs> that might be a top 10 play, too. Look at those moves here. He's Houdini. He gets to the outside. He's got a couple of men to beat. Nathaniel Montanaris breaks to the inside. Now he keeps on going. Finally running out of gas, and he is down at the 17. Center shot, and that is money. Look at that. That man. 22. Aaron Herrera. What awareness. The flip. 1-0 UNM. Oh, my God.
said Orita is his turnovers, but they were on pretty good passes. Campos to the wing, twining and dining. Barraza wants another, and he's on fire. And they're feeling it right now. Caron, he scoops it up. Nice dish underneath. Put it down. To Murillo. Finishes. Here's an alley -oop to Murillo. Put it down. Oh, nice pass. And the finish, Lovato, no. Oh, let win. He saved it. Corona, a little spin move. Push the B button and a finish. Get that out. Says JB, showtime! What the Girl. Behind his back, step back for the win. Got oh. it! Kristen Lucero. Dorian over. Did he get in? I got in. He got Touchdown, in. Dorian Lewis. Nineteen seconds to play. Benavides looking, still looking up the middle. It's intercepted. It's picked off by Freddie Anaya, and Roswell's season will end perfect. Second quarter, second and four for Socorro at the whole 44 yard line. McDaniel trying, good block by Hicks. First down and more, 30, 25, 20. McDaniel might be gone. Touchdown. Wow. Touchdown for Michael McDaniel. It's 40 seconds this year. It's not like 25 like it used to be. He laterals it back. What a play by Hightower Pitch. Looked like somebody moved a little bit early. Hicks, the play pick, double move. He's got his receiver wide open. Caught. One man to beat. Touchdown. Touchdown to number 17, Nathaniel. Third and six. Big defensive play coming up here. A little trickery to Reese. See you later. Touchdown. They went for the deep ball to Reese. to the right, single receiver split to the left. Play fake, head up off the middle, has got some room. 50, 45, 40, has one man to beat. 30, 25, 10, 10 five, touchdown. Touchdown, Hope. Wow. On a Option again, he'll keep it. Now he'll pitch it. Comes out to the 30, 25, 20, up the sideline. Still inbounds into the end zone. Let's see. Touchdown. Touchdown. Portel. It's the outside of running now, Ralph. Davis in the play action. Looking, looking. He's going to go back to Lewis, and Lewis makes a cut, and Lewis still on his feet. Dorian Lewis is in for a touchdown. And he's got all day. It's one miss. And he's rolling, he's rolling, he's rolling. He's got a guy. Can he get it there? Davison to Luke Weissong. Hey, we told you he could spin that football. And that was a throw right there. I know he's got the win in his back, but.